Shadow PC has always been one of those platforms that I've been interested in, but never actually tried out. At first, when I started using cloud gaming back with my Liquid Sky era, I saw it and I'm like, that's cool, kind of the same thing, but uh, it wasn't available in my region, if I could recall correctly. Then with Stadia, I was like, no, that, yeah, that's cool, but not interested right now. After Stadia Close, I did consider it more closely. I did find the price tag to be somewhat prohibitive for my limited use over like a month or so to try it out. Luckily, the Shadow Team came to the rescue. They hooked me up with a couple of months of free access to probably try it out, and I'm glad that they did, because now I can give it a proper go. That's for my honest opinions into a review for you guys. So here we go. This is my review of Shadow PC. Now, like I mentioned, Shadow was kind enough to give me access to Shadow PC along with the power upgrade and some additional storage. And without that, I couldn't have made it really in the first place, so I'm very glad that they did. But also because I would learn so much about Shadow that I had no idea before. Things that I wouldn't have found out if I hadn't actually used it myself. Well, let's begin by talking about what Shadow really is. Because Shadow, compared to other PC cloud gaming services like GeForce Now or Boostroid, it's not quite the same. Shadow actually gives you a full, high-performance PC everything, all bells and whistles, for better and worse. Shadow is actually more than just PC gaming in the cloud, like we Now, it gives you a full, high-performance PC streamed to any screen you have in front of you, be it a phone, a laptop, uh, a TV, you know, anything in between. And just like with Geeverse Now and Boostroid, you need a solid connection for a good experience, and of course, bring your own games to the party. Better or worse, this is the full Windows PC experience. You will have to handle yourself the installing updating the storage management, but while having access to really high download speeds. So before you can actually get started, you need to do your due diligence and set things up. You need to install the launchers you need, you need to install the games you need, change the Windows settings to be the way you want them. The benefit, of course, is everything else that comes with having a high-performance PC. You are the one who specifies what you want. You can play games with mods enabled, and use creative tools like Adobe's Creative Cloud, like Photoshop or Premiere. You can even run like NVIDIA Studio, and you can install any game that you want. Something that I found out when I started actually using the service was the support for multiple screens, or even multiple devices working as multiple screens. Because I can even connect both my own and laptop or laptop and TV to the same shadow session, have them both work as individual screens. I can then either extend it to both screens and have a dual screen setup, or I can just duplicate it to both of them and see the same thing in both. And on my phone, I can use that as a touch input for Windows which arguably isn't working that great because Windows isn't really built for, you know, six inch phone sizes, but still, it works. Something that is really useful is the fact that I can use it as a trackpad that makes it slow, but easy to move around and navigate to the UI. I use that to install games, set up, change Windows settings and set things up to handle updates and storage. And I've even used it to play a game, which arguably wasn't the best use case word, but you know, it worked. You catch my drift. On more technical side, the settings for Shadow is actually full of different tweaks and settings you can do. Bitrate is customizable and can go up to 70 megabits per second. The screen size will adapt to whatever screen you put it on. You know, the even weird resolutions and aspect ratios like my Pixel 6 has works perfectly fine on the box, which is honestly kind of unlike any other cloud gaming service. Although within the games then, they need to support the resolution as well, so, and most likely they don't, which means you will still get those pesky black bars when playing, but the fact that you can use the full screen is kind of nice. The Shadow Power tier that I'm on and the NVIDIA RTX 3070 equivalent GPU means it's 4K content is no trouble at all, really. And on PC, there's even an option to use a USB pass-through to send all your peripherals into Shadow. There's also a lot of technical stuff available for troubleshooting and improving your stream to fit your settings, so a power user or an enthusiast will be right at home. When gaming, quality and raw power are no real issues. I run Hogwarts Legacy, solid frame rates at both high and ultra settings and ray tracing enabled. Now, I'm no frame rate expert at all, nor did I actually bother checking the exact numbers, but it felt smooth. Input latency is well within reasonable levels, considering the fact that I'm connecting to a data center in Dunkirk, France, from my location here in Stockholm, Sweden. The 35 milliseconds of average latency is occasionally noticeable, especially when compared to Boost or Redeemers Now, who both have data centers here in Stockholm, but it's definitely within my threshold of acceptability. I do hope we can see some expansions with more data centers that are closer to where I live, but it's definitely some good streaming tech being used in here. Shadow also provides a speed test and latency test to their data centers. You can check your stats before committing. Because speaking of committing, we do have to talk a little bit about the pricing. It's definitely higher than the likes of Boostroid and GeForce Now. The price tag of $29.99 for the base service 
And that runs on hardware that you can expect modern games to run at maybe medium or high graphics with 256GB of storage. The power upgrade increases performance to top tier machine for an additional $14.99 a month and storage can be added for an additional about $3 per 256GB of storage. So I would say that Shadow has some big benefits over traditional cloud gaming but also traditional local hardware gaming as well. In a sense, it's the best of two worlds, with a few downsides like not having the same ease of access for cloud gaming for example same time it gives you access to so much more than just the ability to seamlessly stream games. Is it enough to warrant the price tag? Hard to say honestly. A desktop with an equivalent performance would probably cost you about, what, $2,000, $3,000? Probably maybe a bit less. That doesn't give you the flexibility of having a cloud machine and the energy bill would probably be higher. The $50 to $60 a month for a shadow with power and about one terabyte of storage would catch up to you after several years of use. And who knows, maybe by then the performance will have increased in Shadow as well. If you are someone who wants to keep your costs down, I would say look elsewhere for cloud gaming. There's plenty of good options out there. Maybe this one isn't for you. Though. That is perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be. This is, at the end of the day, an enthusiast product. So Shadow definitely has my seal of approval. But the price tag means it's not for everyone. But if you can't afford it, it's an incredible solution for gaming, creative use, or working. It's definitely worth considering over having to buy expensive hardware. I will happily continue using it as long as I have access but I can also see the price tag being currently a bit too high for my use. But yeah, Shadow PC is honestly very impressive. And hey, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to find more videos like this one or completely other things that I do every now and then. And head over to Rock Show at YouTube to find my podcast, Rock Players, that I do together with some friends and guests every Thursday live. We dive into cloud gaming news and a lot of, lot of fun stuff. If you want, I have a Discord in where I do giveaways and send dad jokes. It's kind of nice. You should join it. See you next time. Goodbye.